As requested in the previous post about creating 3D backgrounds for Webtoons, this time we will try to practice making them. However, we won't be working on something complex like this just yet. We will start with the basics and the essential tools that you need to understand first. When you open SketchUp, you will see an option to choose the unit of measurement. Here, I will be using meters. You can get yourself familiar with SketchUp by adjusting the camera, starting with rotation and zooming. The Tags panel in SketchUp works similarly to layers in Clip Studio. Later, we will also create objects on different layers. Keep in mind that if you want to draw on a specific layer, make sure that the layer you're targeting has a pencil icon next to it. In SketchUp, you can draw objects using various tools such as line, freehand, arc, and several available shapes. Here, I will give an example using the rectangle tool. You can create a square or rectangular surface with this tool. When creating an object, the bottom right corner will display the dimensions of the object you are making. Click on the area where you want to create an object with your desired size. Even better, you can type the dimensions directly on your keyboard for more precision. For example, if you want to create a square with dimensions 60 by 60 centimeters, type 0 0.6, 0 0.6 because the unit here is meters. Then press enter and the object will be created instantly. The semicolon acts as a separator for width and height in the input. In addition, you can also create objects using the line tool. Use the arrow keys on your keyboard to draw lines that align with the X, Y, and Z coordinates. When using the line tool, you can create shapes that are not available in the shape tool. When creating an object with the line tool, make sure the last line meets the endpoint. If not, the object will not be 2D and will just be a line. Next, we will convert the 2D object into a 3D one. Select the Push-Pull tool, then click on a face of the 2D object you've created. After that, pull the face to form a 3D object. You can also adjust its dimensions the same way as before by typing on the keyboard and pressing Enter. You can use the Push-Pull tool on each side of the object you create to shape it further. You can also use the Move tool on a 3D object to create a similar effect as the Push-Pull tool. This way, you can tilt or angle the object. If you want to move the entire object, you need to select all of its faces. The shortcut to select a single face is double-click while the shortcut to select the whole object is triple-click. Therefore, make sure to triple-click the object first before moving it. There may be instances where, when moving an object, it merges with another object. To avoid this, you need to group your objects first. Triple-click on your object, right-click, and select Make Group. This will prevent them from merging with other objects when moved. Next, there's the Offset tool. You can use this tool to create inner or outer shapes of your object. For example, you can see how the shape becomes an offset within or outside the original object. For example, if I want to create a column with a more varied shape, I would use the Offset tool. This will allow me to create different shapes within or around the column to make it more interesting.
Actually, there are several shortcuts for each tool, but as beginners who are learning the basics, it's better to first focus on memorizing the tool shapes and their functions. Next, there's the scale tool. As the name suggests, you can scale your object using this tool. The dimensions in scaling use percentages. For example, if you want to make the object twice as large, type two in the dimension box. If you want to make the object half its size, type 0 0.5. Next, there's the mirror tool. With this tool, you can mirror your object. Since the object I've created is currently symmetrical, I'll try to create a new asymmetrical object to demonstrate it better. You can mirror your object along the X, Y, or Z axis. I've explained the functions of some basic tools. These are the essential tools you need to master in order to become proficient with SketchUp. Now let's try a practice exercise by creating a simple room. Here, I'll start by creating the column first. Make sure you've already created a dedicated layer that will only contain the column. If you want to duplicate an object, you can do it using the usual shortcut or by pressing Control. When you move the object with the Move tool, press Control, and you'll see a plus sign appear on the corner of the Move tool icon. This means that when you move the object, it will be duplicated as well. You can also duplicate multiple objects at once by typing X followed by the number of objects you want, right after you've duplicated the first object. This will create the specified number of duplicates. A similar method can also be used when you duplicate an object and place it at the end. If you want to add objects in between, type slash followed by the number of objects you want to add. This will evenly distribute the objects between the original ones. That's how I duplicate objects easily while keeping them aligned. It's a great way to quickly create multiple objects in a neat arrangement. Next, we'll try creating the floor slab. Create a new layer and make sure you're drawing on that new layer. Remember to check the pencil icon next to the layer. Name the layer however you like, and we will create the floor slab by drawing a rectangle. Give thickness to the floor slab object so that it has a volume. You can use the push-pull tool to pull the rectangle you've just created, giving it the desired thickness. Here, you can test the functionality of your layers. Try turning your layers on and off to check if you're drawing on the correct layer. It's similar to how you would draw in Clip Studio by managing layers. Next, you can try creating the walls in the same way. You can find out the structural thickness of the walls depending on the material used. Alternatively, you can create the wall thickness according to your own preferences, even without referencing real-world measurements. Here, I'm assuming the wall is made of red bricks with plaster and paint, so the wall thickness is approximately 15 centimeters. Next, we'll try a new way to duplicate. In this case, you could simply duplicate the previous wall and rotate it, but you can also use the Rotate tool and press Control. This will display a plus sign on the icon, allowing you to duplicate the object while rotating it.
Next, we'll try adding a beam. Create a new layer and draw the beam object on that new layer. In this case, the beam you created overlaps with a wall. If this were used as a background for a webtoon, it would definitely be distracting. To fix this, you can use the Scale tool. Select all the walls you've created and adjust the scale so that the objects no longer overlap with the beam. Next, we'll try adding a roof to the room. As usual, separate each object into different layers. When the roof is added to the room, it will close off the space and we won't be able to see what's inside. To solve this, you can use the Section Plane tool to create a section cut of the building. This will allow you to see the interior while keeping the roof in place. Create the section cut on the side you want to view. Typically, I create top and side views to get a better perspective of the interior. Use the Move tool to adjust the section cut on the section plane and double click to toggle it on and off as needed. This will allow you to view different parts of your model more easily. Next, we'll try creating a door. My first step is, of course, to create a new layer. Then I'll mark the area on the wall where the door will be. After marking the door area, switch to the wall layer to perform the editing and create the hole. Redraw the marked door area on the wall layer and then use the push-pull tool to cut through the wall and create the hole for the door. Since the wall has already been grouped, you'll need to edit the wall group. Double-click on the wall object or right-click and select Edit Group. Make sure you're drawing inside the wall group, not outside of it. Next, I'll create the door frame using the offset tool to make the task easier. This will help me create the frame with the correct distance from the edges of the door opening. After that, I'll try creating the door. Here, I want the center of the door to be made of glass, so I'll cut out the middle section and add a new object for the glass. To add materials to your objects, you can use the Paint Bucket tool and choose from the materials available in SketchUp. Next, I'll add details to the door, such as the door handle, and duplicate the door to create the one for the other side. This will help create a more complete and functional door design. If you want to make the door appear open later, rotate the door from this corner. This will simulate the door opening around its hinge. You can also check the SketchUp Warehouse database to search for various materials or objects uploaded by other users. This is similar to when you open the Clip Studio Asset Library to find additional resources.
Next, we'll try capturing an image to be inserted into the Webtoon. This step will help you prepare your 3D model as a background for your Webtoon scenes. Once you've determined the angle you want to capture, add a scene in the Scenes tab. This will make it easier for you to switch between different scenes later on. Next, you can also adjust the shadows in SketchUp to your liking. You can control the time of day, the angle of the sun, and the intensity of the shadows to make your model look more realistic. You can also change the style of the SketchUp model to fit your preferences. Some people choose to take the outline of the SketchUp background and color it themselves. Choose the method that suits you best for creating the background for your webtoon. To export a JPG from SketchUp, perform a 2D graphic export. This will allow you to save your model's view as a 2D image. Go to File, Export, 2D Graphic, and select JPG as your file format. Then, save the image to your desired location. Next, you can import the exported image into Clip Studio and edit it further. If you want to know how I do the rendering for my backgrounds, you can watch my other video for a step-by-step -step guide. I believe these basics are the most important for you to master in order to create your own 3D models. Once you've got a good grasp of the tools I mentioned earlier, you can move on to learning how to create floor plans, interior layouts, and materials and dimensions for buildings. This will allow you to make your background designs even more impressive. I think that's all I can share in this video. Thank you for watching.